All right, so we've done videos on determining a CDL for class A and class B. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the class C CDL. Remember, it's built all around the endorsements that you have to have for either passenger carrying operations or hazardous materials. So welcome back to DOT University. I'm Ryan, the DOT guy. Now help us out, give us a like, and subscribe to our channel, and make sure you hit that bell so you can be notified whenever we're coming out with new content that can help you and your team to stay off the radar. All right, let's get into this. So we're gonna be finishing up this three-part series of how to determine a class A, B, and C. We're ending with this video of class C. Here in the future, I am gonna be coming out with the CDL endorsements and restrictions, and then I'll also do a separate video on that age-old question, air brakes and CDLs, just to, to answer that for everybody. Now, remember, when we're talking about all these commercial motor vehicles, you can't forget, just because it's a non-CDL doesn't mean it's not a commercial motor vehicle. There's still regulations that have to be met with, things that you have to do. That's not the point of this video, but I want to remind everybody, go and check out my video, Identifying Your Fleet, What is a Commercial Motor Vehicle, so you don't mess this up. There's examples that I have down on the bottom, from the Ford with the trailer, to the F-550, to the Isuzu box trucks, those are all non-CDL commercial motor vehicles that you still have to have DOT compliance with. But in this video, we are tackling the Class C CDL. So we've already talked about Class A and B. And this one, we're really going to be breaking down the Class C. It's all about the smaller vehicles, whether it's designed to carry passengers or hazmat. However, that vehicle is defined. We're going to really break down the nuts and bolts of how this works so that you are prepared with your fleet. Now remember, Class C CDLs is all about the endorsements. All right, let's get into this. Let's RTFB. We got to read that federal book. We're going to go back to the definition of 49 CFR 383.5, the definition of a commercial motor vehicle as it pertains to a commercial driver's license. So again, the start of that definition is a motor vehicle or a combination of vehicles used in commerce to transport passengers or property if that motor vehicle is and then we've got the first point and the second point there, which we already talked about in our Group A and Group C, Group B vehicles. So I'm not going to get too much into those, which is why I've kind of minimized them and dropped them out. Uh, again, we talked about those in a previous video. But the third point in here talks about Group C vehicles. Those are basically small vehicles that does not meet Group A or Group B requirements. That's literally what the regulation says. And it says, number one, uh, Roman numeral I is designed to transport 16 or more passengers, including the drivers. Now, really, I want you to remember on that word, we're going to come back to that, designed to transport. We will come back and I'll address that here in one of the upcoming slides. The next thing, Roman numeral two says, is of any size and used to transport placardable amounts of hazardous material quantity or agents or toxin that are defined in 42 CFR part 73. So for this, we're really just gonna be talking about that placardable amount. When it requires to have placards, then it's gonna be, again, a group C type vehicle, uh, the smaller vehicles. All right, let's tackle this design to transport. Now this goes to the regulations. There's nothing that defines that other than the interpretation question. Now, what are the interpretations? When you go to your green books, your regulation books, whichever brand you have, there's several, Mancon, Label Master, JJ Keller. Um, you can even be looking them up online. A good safety person knows the regulations. A great safety person knows the regulations and the interpretations. So really familiar with that. Now, interpretations are where the feds have been asked questions and they broke down that rule and then they provide you guidance on what that is depending on the question that comes in. So this is the interpretation in 383.5, interpretation question number one. It's a two-part question. It's broken down into A and B. Let's tackle A first. It says, does designed to transport as used in the, in the definition of a CMV in 383.5 mean the original design or the current design when a number of the seats are removed? So the guidance, it's pretty simple. Again, I'm gonna to get to it and I'll get through the rule and then I'll show you some examples. So guidance A says designed to transport, this is directly from the feds, means the original design. Removal of the seats does not change the design capacity of the CMV so long as it still transport passengers. So that's basically saying, look, if you leave seats in there or still have passengers in there, it still is gonna be a passenger carrying vehicle. Now people do this, 
you know, quite often they'll they'll remove some seats, they'll get it underneath that requirement. So maybe it's 14 passengers, including the driver, and they think, well, we don't need a CDL. Well, according to that guidance, that is not true. Now, this is a perfect example. You got to look at this, and if you count the seats, you know, it, it goes through. I can see I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then usually there's right up here, you can't see it in the picture, there'd be the, the passenger side and then the driver. So we're at 16 to 17 people in there, including the driver. This would be a class C group vehicle based on that definition. Now, when I talk about removal of the seats, that vehicle could look something like this. We pull out those last two rows and that makes room. It gets the passenger capacity down below, you know, that 16, including the driver. However, it's still designed to original design was to carry that much. So regardless, if I'm going through back here and stacking up luggage or cargo or whatever it is, I'll show you a couple other interesting pictures here in a minute, that is still going to remain a CDL class C type vehicle based on that definition. Now the second part of design to transport is kind of interesting. It goes through the, the two, part B says, if all of the seats except for the driver's seat are removed from the vehicle originally designed to transport only passengers to convert it to a cargo carrying vehicle doesn't meet the definition of 383.5. Again, that previous definition we just went over as a commercial motor vehicle pertains to CDL. Now the guidance in here, this is really interesting, okay? It says no, it does not, unless it's mo the modified vehicle has a gross vehicle weight rating or gross vehicle weight, whichever is higher, of 26,001 pounds or more. Now if you look at my, my class B commercial motor vehicle video that will go through and tell you that 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 heavy poundage like that over 26,000 pounds is going to require a class B CDL so as long as it's a smaller vehicle it, it's now just a property carrying vehicle based on that and then it picks back up and it says or is used to transport placardable hazmat okay again that's going to kick it into other parts of class C that you'll see here later on in this video. The vehicle shall not, we'll continue right here, the vehicle shall not transport passengers, only the driver may occupy. So this guidance says, look, if we've got one of these vehicles and we remove all of the seats, except for that driver's seat, and now, and we just use it for cargo, now it is just a property carrying vehicle. It would turn into a non-CDL vehicle as long as it's not of a certain size, over 26,000 pounds, and as long as it's not carrying that placarded load of hazardous material. Okay, what does that kind of look like? Well, let's look at some, some vehicles that are possibly in this category, okay? So the first group that I'm gonna be showing you, these are vehicles that have a gross vehicle weight rating greater than 26,000 pounds, okay? So 26,001 pounds or more. Now this first, this is a rather interesting combo. And this kind of remembers me, it reminds me of my days when I was a trooper um, out in Western Colorado. I used to do the patrol uh, when it was a nice, beautiful day and I wanted to get away from the rat race. I would go up, go up over the Grand Mesa, um, over there between Delta and Grand Junction. And you would see a combination that would go up there and it was loaded up with four wheelers, ATVs, on the back and it was basically a school bus and basically what they did was they just opened up the back and made a ramp and they drive the the vehicles up in there okay this is very similar this is another guiding outfit that uh they use these these vehicles they put them up on there he's even pulling a little trailer carrying one extra one but if you look up in here he still has seats so what's going on with this unit is they're going through and they're taking up passengers they're taking up on on these trail rides people are paying to go on these trail rides and they're transporting now this is a business and this because this vehicle number one two things are going against this one overall gross vehicle weight rating is over twenty six thousand pounds and number two the still has passengers on board so this bus would still require that class b cdl from my previous video and it would require the passenger endorsement due to the, the seats they didn't remove all of the seats except for the driver's seat and he still has passengers on board this next example here is, is going to be an old bus that they basically converted into a tank vehicle. So this could be a, probably a water tank. I don't see any placards or anything like that. More than likely it's some type of water tank. Now here, when we get into this one, this one's kind of interesting. This driver may not need that endorsement. And I'll come back into that into endorsements as long as he removed all of the seats in here. And this is just carrying say tools or property or whatever else. And the only thing that's left there is this driver's seat. That then would still be a commercial motor vehicle because again, it's over the 26,000. But 
let's take it one step further. Let's look at these two little things, all right? So with this one, we have this first, this, this old school bus. This is a smaller bus, a shorter wheelbase on it, so it's a smaller chassis, which means we're, we're going to be under the 26,000. So it's going to be 26,000 and one, I'm sorry, 26,000 and less um, with this, this smaller school bus. Now, this one is in the middle of a conversion, it looks like. So in order to get this underneath all CDL requirements, you know, if they're going to be using it as part of the business, they would have to be take out every seat that's in here to go through and convert that. And the only seat they're allowed to have is this and is the driver's seat. And then they cannot transport any passengers. Now, this one, I found this one very interesting here. We got this little um, uh, little roach coach uh, that's out here. Uh, they're out and they're, they're serving. They have converted this bus. You can see the original bus windows here. You see the doors and the stairs going up into this. As long as they have removed all of the seats and all that's left is, in, is the uh, driver's seat, then this is now going to be a non-CDL Class C vehicle. They can't have any workers. They can't transport. If it's got seats back there or they're still transporting passenger, a single passenger, then it's going to kick it back into that. So usually when we start getting into these passenger vehicle conversions, you can usually come across some pretty interesting combinations that we have out there. Now, the other side of this, this uh, definition for a Group C vehicle is all about the placards. Basically, it said a small vehicle that's carrying any quantity that require, requires placardings. Now, placarding, I could probably do several hours of videos just on placarding requirements and exceptions. So right now, I'm just gonna go through and show you the real basic, you know, 30 second topic, maybe a little bit more than that, of, of the placarding chart. So first off, a DOT 16 chart. These are available. You can get them at femsa.dot.gov. Uh, that is going to be the uh, federal hazardous material site. They can you can download a PDF copy of this placarding chart. It's got the placards, the labels, the markings, uh, all those requirements. A lot of good information. Um, but it also has on the back of it the tables, okay, which you can also find you know in the general placarding requirements of 49 CFR 172 500 through 560. That's all the placarding requirements. Now the table commodities are going to be in 172.504, specific paragraph E. And that's where we get introduced to Table 1 and Table 2. Now, Table 1 is the harshest of the commodities. Um, I commonly refer to that as, you know, ethyl methyl death, glow, and boom, um, just kind of to make a little uh, light of the situation. So we're dealing with our harder explosives, our poisonous gases, you know, dangerous when wet, our peroxides, our organic peroxides, specific to type B, Poison inhalation hazard, you smell it, then you die type thing. And then we've got, of course, the radioactives. Now, that is any commodity. If you're transporting a Table 1 commodity and you've got a quarter of a teaspoon of it, you have to placard your vehicle. Then we have Table 2 commodities, which is going to be 1,001 pounds or more of a Table 2 commodity. And basically, that just lists out the rest of the commodities that aren't listed in Table 1. Those are your two basic placarding requirements. Now, there's one more point that I want to point out. It's going to be if you're carrying a bulk package. Now, if you're carrying a bulk package, then that basically means that if that commodity is the hazardous material, again, a Table 2 commodity carried inside this bulk package, even regardless of the weight, if it just comes in under the 1,000 pounds, the bulk package is going to kick it into the placarding requirements. Again, I'm not getting into any placarding exceptions or anything like that. This is just really quick in a nutshell, what has to have placards. All right, let's kind of break this down. Now, CDL Class C, it's all for the smaller vehicles, all right? We've worked our way through the flow chart and we've come up down to these categories. So now this is the flow chart. I remastered it here recently to go more in line with what the feds are using to train enforcement officers uh, and that type of thing. So with this, this flow chart, let me just kind of zoom in just a little bit more so you can see this just a little bit better. How this goes through and, and how this works is, again, it starts at the top with, is it a combination unit? Now, from there, to get to Class C, you basically have two, two rows you can take. Either it is a combination unit or it is not. And then you can see you have a couple different ways to get down here to the Class C combinations on either side, whether or not it is a combination unit or it is not a combination unit. So with that being said, it's pretty simple. If it's not a combination unit, it goes straight down here to what's the overall gross vehicle weight or gross vehicle weight rating of the power unit 
And then it comes down here, is it designed to transport 16 or more, including the driver? And then from there, it gets into, is it carrying a placable amount of hazardous materials? Both of these last two questions will land you into the class C CDL. Whereas if it's a combination unit, it's gonna come down here and you got a couple ways so it, you can see where it gets you in to these squares will ultimately land you down here into the CDL. So if you're going down through this, you can see that it first goes into the trailer. What's the overall weight of the trailer? If it's over 10,000 pounds, you're gonna come down here to the overall combination. If it's under 10,000 pounds, it's gonna go back to the weight of the overall weight of the power unit. Now remember, we're talking about smaller vehicles, so we're gonna ultimately end up down here into the non-A or B categories. And then that's going to, again, go into the passengers and the hazmat. Now, the one thing I really love about this flow chart is how it mirrors each side uh, for the class B, C possibilities that you have on there. And remember, if you make it all the way down through the bottom of this, these are no CDL required, but more than likely, you do have DOT compliance required. So remember that. Don't forget that. Now, let's go ahead and work through a couple examples uh, for this flow chart. It'll really kind of drive this home. So the first question we got to ask is, is this commercial motor vehicle? All right, looking at all these, we've got a, a small activity school bus. Uh, it looks like we have one of those, either an airport shuttle. Usually you see these also at the hotels, a little 25 passenger um, hotel shuttle right here in this area. And then you got that big old stretch limousine, you know, that you can cram like 20 people into that kind of thing for the parties. So when we get into this, it says the first question after this combination unit says, does the single vehicle have a gross vehicle weight rating or gross vehicle weight of 26,001 pounds or more? Okay, now these are light passenger vehicles. All of their gross vehicle weight ratings are below 26,000 pounds. So we don't have to worry about that with any of these. So we're gonna answer no to this one because we're not over that, that heavier weight. The next thing says, is it designed to transport 16 or more, including the driver? So absolutely, we look at this school bus. The school bus is probably designed to, to transport anywhere from you know 16 to, to 25 people. Uh, this bus, when I looked up the specs on, on this bus right here, this small little mini bus, it was a 25 passenger. And then these limos range from a lot of different avenues, but uh, most definitely they're designed to cram a lot of bodies in there for the, the party time and that that type of thing. So so absolutely on the party wagon. So we're gonna be over the 16. So that takes us to yes, then it is a class C CDL required vehicle. Now remember, because it's a passenger uh, vehicle, you have two possibilities for your endorsements. You're gonna have either the P for passengers or the S for the school bus endorsement. Uh, which just means that we have additional testing to do in order to get that license with that endorsement. The next question that we have to get into is again, is it a combination vehicle? So we need to look at these units. Again, we have just power units and no trailers with this. So we'll go through and we'll talk briefly just about each of these. This first little picture, I know the quality is terrible on that and I do apologize. I stumbled across this online while doing a little bit of research and it just, it just raised so many red flags. I see we got a dangerous placard and then we have a corrosive placard. So yeah, absolutely, we're dealing with a placard of vehicle. I have no idea what we got going on back in here. I'm a little bit afraid to ask. That I, I'm sure we could probably do an entire series of problems that we've got with this combination. But again, a vehicle of any size carrying a placardable amount of hazmat. Now this truck right here, this was actually a traffic stop of mine. Um, you know, many years ago as a, a state trooper, I stopped this vehicle out in Golden area, was carrying, uh, you had placards that had the explosives on there. Uh, down here on the bottom, again, we've got a van and we've got this little uh, mini truck carrying oxygen. Now these could each easily also have a, an oxygen tank in there, 200 gallons. So that's gonna also fire up some other endorsements that we need to have. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna answer this. Is it a combination vehicle? No. Then it goes to the weight. Is the single vehicle have a gross vehicle weight or gross vehicle weight rating of 26,000 pounds or more? No, nope, these are all smaller vehicles, okay? This 5,500 is was at that time about 17,000 pounds. I think the 5,500s today are going up to around 19,500 pounds. And this little Isuzu truck, you know, is is running, you know, probably between 12 and 14 for that small little truck, 12 and 14,000. 
Okay, so these are going to be our smaller vehicles, which are neither class A or B. The next question that comes across on the flowchart is, is the vehicle designed to transport more than 15 passengers? You know, you might be able to go through and cram some bodies into this one, but that was not the original design for that, okay? So because it was not originally designed for that, that design to transport will not apply to this. So the next question that we run into this is going to be, is the vehicle transporting a placardable amount of hazardous material? So we have to answer yes to that because in all four of these examples, that's going to be yes. So that makes this a class C required, which means the endorsements that apply is going to be the hazmat endorsement and the tank endorsement. Okay. Now things like this little, this uh, oxygen delivery service, okay, they're more than likely going to have the X endorsement, which is the combination of the hazmat and tank. All right. I have just two more examples that I want to show you so that we can get into the other side of this chart and we can see how the class C combination applies when we're dealing with a combination unit. So this next set of vehicles we're looking at, we've got two different mini buses, small passenger vans, that type of thing, that are both pulling trailers. Now in this first example that we do have here, we do have a little bit of a heavier trailer. That's gonna be indicative of the conspicuity markings that we have on there. But for the sake of this example, we're just gonna treat this example as though we have two trailers that are gonna be under 10,000 pounds. So we have to answer yes to the combination unit. That gets us to does the trailer have a gross vehicle weight or combination weight rating of 10,001 pounds or more. So we're gonna treat both these trailers as if they were smaller. Now in this unit here, on this second, on this first trailer example, if that trailer did in fact come in a little bit heavier than 10,000 pounds, you're still gonna land into the uh, class C combinations because at that point with the trailer being heavy, it's gonna look at the overall combination weight rating for a class A CDL determination which this is not, and if you don't understand that, please go back and watch my video determining a CDL for class A. But uh, for now, we're gonna treat them as though they are a little bit smaller. So that takes us to the next question. We'll answer no to this. Both of our trailers are smaller. It says, does the power unit have a gross vehicle weight rating of 26,001 pounds or more? We're gonna say no. Both of these, they're probably ranging on gross vehicle weight ratings anywhere from 12,000 to 14,000. Uh, depending, you know, of course, on the actual chassis and what the manufacturer stated, but we should be somewhere in that ballpark. So we're going to answer no to this. And then the next question is going to say, is the vehicle designed to transport 16 or more passengers, including the driver? In both of these examples, we have definitely, you know, 20 plus passenger capacity um, within these, these vehicles. So we're going to answer yes, which is going to, of course, take us to the class C, CDL is required in this combination vehicle. Now, also don't forget your endorsements on this. This is gonna be both of these units are gonna require the P endorsement. Now, if it was a school bus used in school bus operations, the driver would require the S operation. The last example that I really wanna show you is the combination vehicles as it pertains to say hazardous materials. So in this one, we've got these different trailers that we have down here on the bottom of the screen, or we have this one that's coupled to this pickup, the Chevy pickup. Now, these are smaller trailers. <clears throat> they could be somewhere around the 10,000 pound mark. Again, we're gonna treat them for the sake of this, this video as though they are smaller, but because the overall combination is not over 26, we, sh we were not gonna have any problems with the class A CDL determination. So it is possible though, with these units, of course, to hook them up to a larger truck that's over that. Again, pay attention to your gross vehicle weight ratings. But in this example, we're going to answer for question number one. Is it a, com a combination vehicle? Absolutely. Both of the, all these would, would require either a power unit or a towed. They are going to be towed behind another unit. So we're going to say yes. The next question says is does the trailer or the gross vehicle weight rating or, or gross vehicle weight have a weight rating of 10,001 pounds or more. So we're gonna answer no to that, assuming these are smaller trailers. Again, we'll know that for sure by looking at the VIN plate, even if they're a little bit over, just like the example before, it's still gonna land us into the class C requirement. We answered no to this one, it's gonna go back to the power unit. Is the power unit's gross vehicle weight rating or gross vehicle weight 26,001 pounds or more? Go to the VIN label and check, but in this one, we're dealing with this pickup truck, this, this 2500 series pickup, and its gross vehicle weight rating, depending on the year and the chassis, 
going to be somewhere between 9,000 pounds to 10,000 even. So we're going to answer, of course, no to that. The next question says, is it designed to transport uh, 16 or more passengers, including the drivers? And of course, we're not transporting any type of passenger work in this one. So then it goes straight to the last question. Is this vehicle designed, or sorry, is this vehicle carrying a placardable amount of hazardous materials? Well, in these, each of these trailers, they are carrying 1993 flam or combustible liquids, and that is going to be your diesel fuel. Now, this upper trailer, this enclosed trailer, if that's got non-bulk tanks, maybe we'll have some placarding exceptions. I'll get into all of the placarding exceptions for combustible liquids in another video. But in this uh, example, we're going to go ahead and treat it as though they are required placards. So this is going to be a class C CDL. Now, of course, when we deal with the class C CDL and we're dealing with the endorsements on this, that's going to require the um, hazardous material and the tank. So your driver would need the X endorsement to cover both of those. All right, that should clear it up for the class C. Thank you for tuning in and really watching it. Make sure you check out these videos to determine both class A and class B. That'll tie up this series. We will be coming out here in a little bit with the uh, endorsements and restrictions. Uh, and also we'll probably tackle that age old question of air brakes and CDLs. Remember, best practices keep your employees and America roadways safe. Thanks for joining us.